tires right now. Um, I've been trying to go back to sleep since two, but I think there's a lot going on in my mind, so I haven't been able to. No one ever talks about how lonely it is to be an international student and how freaking terrifying um, the first few nights can be. You know, a lot of these kids, they come when they're like only 17, 18, and just to think that they're in a complete foreign country where they don't know the language that well, they don't know anybody. It is humbling feeling this uneasiness because it makes me appreciate those international students around me so much more. It makes me appreciate what my parents went through as immigrants. You know, just being thrown into a foreign language setting, it is scary. Um, and yeah, you could study a language your whole life, but when you're actually in that environment, it is a whole different story. As an adult, I feel like there's a lot more expectations we put on ourselves and also um, that pride, right, of not looking ridiculous and um, sounding ridiculous. I also feel weirdly homesick, which is a foreign feeling for me. I think um, I'm generally pretty okay with being away from home. Um, I've been pretty independent my whole life, but I think Knowing that I'll be away for a while this time makes me all of a sudden really um, nostalgic. Even though it's only my first day here, I miss my friends already. I miss happy, I miss my parents. Um, I miss knowing that, I guess, that they're right there, you know, even if I don't actively ask for their help. Just seeing them or having my dad cook like noodles for me or times like this makes you realize that you're not as grown as you thought you know i've been kind of just aimlessly going around neighborhoods the past um maybe three four days and honestly i didn't really see anything really like i passed by the eiffel tower um accidentally from pretty far away but i saw it and i was like huh Oh, um, there's a French word called flaneur, which means, I guess, someone who wanders aimlessly, and that's kind of how I've been feeling. Um, it's nice not having a destination in that sense and just taking it all in by osmosis. Ooh, ça c'est très cool. Ça va, madame? Ah, combien ça coûte? the subway right now today's been a pretty good day um, I think I'm finally getting used to my environment it really helps knowing kind of my whereabouts so when I see like that McDonald's that Starbucks I'm like okay I kind of know where I am and that really helped put some um, peace to my mind okay my subway's here j'adore l'ambiance ici <laughs> I just want to quickly share something that made me really happy. Uh, I just went to an event and the person who was speaking made two jokes in French and I laughed at both of them. It's finally kicked in that I'm in Paris and that I'm about to go to culinary school. So school starts tomorrow. Uh, I am actually so, so excited because I just looked at my syllabus. Well, actually, I, I've been looking at my syllabus for a while and um, just on sauces, there are about 30 different types and that's all we're focusing on for the first two weeks. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to expect. I know my class is only 10 people, but it's an international program. So I'm guessing there will be people from all over the world and all like super passionate amateur cooks who want to be professionals. So I am so excited to meet these like-minded people and to honestly just like make some friends. <laughs> I'm almost feeling that giddiness. Um, that I felt when I was a kid and I'm about to go on a field trip and you know you can't sleep at night and all that my personal experience in uni wasn't the greatest like I didn't love my programs but this time around I'm actually so so excited to study I spent like two hours just kind of studying the different styles of cutting and slicing yeah I 
definitely do not anticipate that much theoretical content on um, these fundamental techniques, which obviously the more the better. I am super pumped. Um, lots of vocabularies I have to memorize, which are all in French, so that's a good thing. Um, but the precision in that is definitely shocking. For example, um, there are different types of like little batons, little matchsticks you can cut, and depending on the width and the height in centimeters and millimeters, the name changes. I know whatever I make my friends and family enjoy, um, but no, that changes when you slap on the title of culinary school because people's expectation of you is a lot higher, and my expectation of myself is a lot higher. Um, so that's definitely a sense of pressure that I, I want to kind of be aware of because you know all of a sudden there are these quantifiable black and white measures to dictate how good you actually are it'd be pretty easy to feel defeated because when you fail it's very visually obvious in uni you're not expected to know exactly what you want to do and you're especially nowadays you're not expected to be good at what you're studying right away because you're a student whereas here if it's more of you know like a trade um so i don't know <laughs> the pressure of your work being like right there for everybody to see for your professor to see um next to other people's work it's like a direct comparison every single day every single thing i'm a little bit nervous about that part oh yes i have a couple of really just pressing questions i want to know like how do you study for a culinary exam how do you how do you get tested um like what what do you what do culinary students eat um who are these people that decide to switch their professions in the middle of their career so yeah i hope um i'll get answers to all of this in the next couple of months and i can share them with you Okay, merci beaucoup. Donc c'est le train là? D'accord. Ok. Oh, merci. day today oh my god that was the craziest first day um i just finished reviewing honestly i went into it thinking i was pretty prepped i studied for maybe like three hours beforehand we got some um like fundamentals and theories and i went into first class with maybe like already six pages five pages of notes and boy i already feel behind so the first thing we did when we walked in was we basically all stood there waiting for our instructions. We were all kind of gauging how scary this instructor is going to be. And right away, he did not miss this opportunity to intimidate us. He took one look at us. Uh, we were all wearing our new uniforms. I thought everyone looked pretty good. Immediately, he's like, you guys all look sloppy. And he made us take it all off. And we had to like redo every single part from the top to um, like the way we rolled up our sleeves, the hats, the way we rolled our aprons. And it, it was like fascinating because I've never paid attention. I thought it was just, I know how to put on a shirt, right? You button it and that's it but he really emphasized that it cannot be dirty when we're in the kitchen which means i have to be washing my uniform every other day and he expects them to be ironed as well i don't remember the last time i ironed something so that's gonna be interesting we opened up our massive like uh chef's equipment little it's like a black box um i'll insert a clip here so i felt a little bit like a secret agent when i was carrying this but when i opened it i was like okay that's a lot of knives um and immediately we went through this like massive list 
of um, just different items and it's all in French and honestly I like I recognize maybe like the whisk the scissor and the spatula that's it um, I try to like draw little doodles of it in my notebook um, so I kind of like recognize but the thing about French is that it's super precise so they're like four different types of ladles today reminded me a lot of when I quit my desk job to work in a bakery and I don't know like in my head you know you think baking is very dainty and cooking is very therapeutic and it is when you do it at home um, I remember after my first day of working in a bakery my arms were so sore the next day that I like couldn't even lift it up to to put on my shirt um, and I remember that was the most physically draining period of my life where I felt pain in a way that no workout has ever given me um, I'm not as tired today yet but um, how's your arm after whisking for 40 minutes <laughs> I'm dying <laughs> how's your arm after whisking that. <laughs> <laughs> Just that? Have you seen my head? No, let me see. It's a. Let's see, this is a blister. Oh my god. And this one, t this. Mm -hmm. Wait, all from today? Yeah. You know, I couldn't hold my pen after. I was like shaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't get yelled at, thankfully, but this chef is definitely not an easy one to clean. But I think. That's kind of the whole point. They want you to feel like this is something really serious and that there is the right way of doing something. Um, definitely, I feel that pressure. No one was lacking. So my class is only nine people, uh, which means like everyone can see what everyone's doing at all times. Every single task he gives us, we're all like just rushing to finish it as quickly as we could because we're so scared to get yelled at. It was really, really fun. I felt like I was in a boot camp. It is just a little bit overwhelming when I feel like I have to absorb all of this in like one night. Um, so the program is super intense. Every day we go through three to six different items, so different um, sauces for the first like two three weeks so it's a relatively lighter but for the remainder of my program it's basically three to six different recipes um, so I've been just trying to cram everything that I learned today in um, for the past two hours I was supposed to go to bed to be honest at like 10 30 um, but it's right now 12 30 I just finished so I thought I'll do a little like um, wrap up of this is how my first day went sort of thing and one thing i really like about the school is their ecological focus so um being very environmentally friendly and being very conscientious humanist donc c'est une cuisine qui est euh, par définition éco-responsable euh, et euh, qui euh, du coup doit se transmettre de génération en génération en utilisant des produits qui sont très locaux purement saisonniers voilà in terms of the whole cooking process, how they buy their ingredients, how they source their ingredients, and of course, um, what they use in their dishes. My favorite part of the day was probably, okay, maybe not favorite, but definitely like the most relaxed I felt was at the end of the day when everything was done and we finished cleaning, um, you know, we all kind of just sat around the table and we ate and it, it makes me really excited thinking that I get to eat with these people every single day for the rest of my program um, and we actually will be eating restaurant recipe foods from um, Ellen Dukas, which is the founder of my school. I really miss having regular uh, food bonding eating time with the same people. I guess I didn't, the last time I had that really was like in university when I had housemates, right? So this is really exciting. Um, oh, and at the end of the night, it was so sweet. He, uh, our instructor, basically told the guys of our um, little class that you guys have to make sure that these girls get home safe from the train because my school is kind of like in the suburban area and I have to take the train back to Paris and then a little um, like walk home so that was really really nice because I would have been terrified if I had to be in the suburban area this late at night I'm back from day three it's already 11 o'clock but I still got some reviews to do but before I do that I just want to quickly share something that made me really happy today. So um, let me change the lighting, there we go. Um, before I did this program, one thing I was really nervous about was, you know, the precision that culinary school has. So I knew that, you know, my 
strength and weakness is that I eyeball everything I make so I go by the taste that's why if you are asking me to explain how I make something I have a lot of struggles because one I don't remember um, and two I kind of just figure out as I go um, yeah and I thought that would be a big challenge I would have to overcome here but um, as it turns out our chef wasn't following the recipe that we received and he kind of explained that you know well one anyone can follow a recipe but two he wants to the first stage is to dr to drill our technical ability so that we do everything with precision technique wise but when it comes to you know knowing what heat level knowing like when to proceed to the next step he wants us to feel and to use all our senses so he's like remember the sound remember the smell and i absolutely love that because it's not like okay after five minutes and 30 seconds turn it to six level or like put in 100 grams of this and i don't know 30 grams of that like i feel like that takes the fun out of cooking and that was one worry i had um before coming to this program i didn't want to become like a cooking robot and i want whatever i learned to be replicable and applicable to every types of dishes in any environment right so yeah that was really really exciting when i kind of heard his philosophy and just cooking by the feel I remember when I was in university and I took this really difficult music theory course it was like music harmony I forget what it's called but that's how you know I probably didn't do well but it was like four lines of melodies that you had to like like figure out how to I guess match them and write your own notes I struggled so much with that because our professor he was like a genius he's won some um, Juno awards which is basically the Nobel Prize before musicians um, and I remember asking him like how do you know which chord goes where and how do you write each note he said you just feel it and he doesn't mean like when you listen to someone playing it he means when he looks at the notes he can physically hear it in his head that's something that just like I could not comprehend it I was so frustrated in that course but that's a concept that's so natural to me when it comes to cooking and that makes me so happy and today we actually got to taste a lot of what we were making so that was really fun getting to taste like even the bad products right like before a roux is ready what it would taste like and what the final product is supposed to taste like um and it was really funny because whenever the chef wasn't around everyone will be snacking on you know like the leftover ingredients because we're all starving and so hungry um but whenever he's like cutting um ingredients we're getting more comfortable with him now and people are like can i try that uh we tried like some really good ham we tried some sweet breads we tried um this like tomato seed and peel garnish that we made the day before by um, roasting in the oven for probably overnight on very very low heat so these are not things that you typically serve um they're all the garnishments but it was really really cool getting to try all these tiny little parts that make up a full dish